Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Ben Salem Township Council meeting. Today's date is May 20th, 2024. I'd like to start the meeting by having everyone to please rise for a moment, silent meditation or prayer, and we're going to follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to introduce you to those of us on the dais this evening. To my extreme left, we have our township engineer, Phil Wester. Next to him, we have Debbie McBreen. She's our uh, township executive secretary for council. But to my extreme right, we have our solicitor, Joe Paizo. Next to him, we have the Honorable Mayor Joseph DiGirolamo. Our council members in attendance this evening, we have Michelle Benitez to my extreme left. We have Joe Knowles. <coughs> Writing down there, and we have Stacy Champion next to me. I'm Ed Kisselbeck. Okay, we'd like to begin a meeting with uh, <clears throat> the uh, agenda item number three, which is public comments. Does anyone have any, any like to come up and make any public comments on agenda items? And we, you'll have the opportunity as each agenda item is brought up to come up and speak on or be, behalf of a, a, a subject matter or against it, whatever you like, okay? All right, so not seeing anyone come forward, I'm going to close agenda item number three. Agenda item number four is going to be the approval of the council minutes. That's for the meeting of May the 6th. Has everyone had the opportunity to uh, read the minutes for May 6, 2024? I'll ask if there are any changes or deletions. Not seeing any, I'll ask for an approval of the council minutes from May 6th. Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. So we do have a motion on the floor. I'll second the motion. Second on the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And against? Any abstentions? Unanimous. Agenda item number five. Council consideration of mayor's recommendation to the Planning Commission Board. This is Brian Hanratty. I don't see Brian in the audience. He's not here. Oh. What was your question? I'm sorry. Who's looking for no, he's not here. Uh, he's on vacation. He will be sworn in later. Council, you have his resume and everything. Okay, I, I, I thought I thought we had done that. Okay. Yeah, he couldn't. Uh, Debbie reached out today, and he's away. Okay. Okay. Well, we have uh, the, the mayor is recommending to us a candidate to replace a, a, a planning commission member, board member who had passed away. And uh, it is Brian Hanratty. Joseph, do you want to give us a, a, just a brief history, or just let it? Do you want to? Do you want to give us a brief history on Brian Hanratty? <clears throat> Volunteer work. Uh, he actually ran for the school board. Uh, he's an attorney, uh, and uh, he does a lot of work uh, in and around Ben Salem as a volunteer. And you should have his resume in front of you. Okay. Well, well, it looks pretty impressive to me. So with that, is there any questions from the council members? Not hearing any. I'll ask for a motion to be put on the floor to approve the uh, I'll, make, I'll make a motion that we the approve. Planning commission. I'll make a motion that we approve the. Uh, make a motion now. <laughs> oh, you didn't make it yet? No, go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. You didn't oh, okay, sorry. I, I would like to mention that Brian's a uh, lifetime resident of Ben Salem. And a Rotarian. And went to Conwell Egan, what used to be Egan, where I went. Thank you. Anyway, uh, another great American. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, the mayor's recommendation of Planning Commission board member Brian Hanratty. I happily second that. We have a motion floor. We have a second. All those in favor, signify with an aye. Aye. And against any abstentions, that is uh, unanimous, four to zero. Uh, Mr. Pizer, what's uh, being canceled for this evening? Is there anything being tabled? Yes, uh, Mr. Kisselback, item number eight on this evening's agenda 
preliminary and final land development for Brilla LLC. We received correspondence from the applicant's attorney saying that they're still working on some aspects of the plan that came up in the 11th hour uh, and that they want to uh, address before making a presentation to council. They're therefore asking that the uh, matter be tabled until uh, council meet, first council meeting in July. That be July 8th. <clears throat> All right, ladies and gentlemen, you heard the request. Can I have a motion on the, yeah, on the floor? Make a motion to approve the table. The, the uh, item be tabled. All right, so we have a motion for the table agenda on item number 8 to July 8th. I need a second. I'll second it. Second. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 And against any abstentions. That is four to zero. Unanimous. Number six will be, uh, this is consideration of a public hearing on an ordinance. This is amending chapter 225, vehicles and traffic articles three, parking regulations. This is in section seven, parking, standing, and stopping. And this shall be amended by no parking or standing, stopping anytime sign on River Road. Also, a direction of travel was going to be eastbound on the Riverside, and the location is from Walnut to Locust Avenue. Uh, Phil, you want to give us an update on this? I'm not uh, specifically sure of where the uh, where these came from with regard to the the usually it's the police department does that sort of thing yeah. recommending the issues. Right. Okay, that's all done by our police department. Right. Yeah. If if, if I if I you didn't hear me at all. Is that what you said? Okay, that's my fault. I'm sorry. Well, I'm going to repeat it for you. How's that? Oh. I, <laughs> I don't know we can do that. All Mr. Right, Kesselback. So I'm going to repeat this Mr. for Kesselbeck. everyone here. Now I can, I, I can project my voice a little better. That sounds better. Just by, for some reason, I can hear an echo now. Okay, agenda item number six. This is a consideration and public hearing on an ordinance. This is amending chapter 225, which is called Vehicles and Traffic Article 3. And it's re regarding parking regulations. This is section seven. Parking, standing, and stopping, Appendix 8 shall be amended to add the following restrictions. And now this is how the ordinance is going to read. It's going to be no park, a sign is going to be no parking, standing, or stopping any time. And that's going to be a sign on River Road. <clears throat> the direction of travel eastbound on the Riverside, and the location is from Walnut Avenue down to Locust Avenue. All right, now... Uh, Phil, you're not familiar with this? Mr. Kisselbeck, here. Why, why, why don't I take it? Um, sure. As is always the case in applications such as this, where uh, we're being asked to consider no parking signs or the like, uh, the process is typically that a complaint will come in or a request will come in to the mayor's office. The mayor, in turn, directs the Department of Public Safety to make a determination whether um, any sort of traffic control or parking control is warranted based on the complaint. In the case of this particular request, uh, the Public Safety Department went out, took a look. Um, the complaint was that vehicles parking along the roadway were making it difficult for people to make turns, that it was reducing the width of the roadway to make it only wide enough for a single vehicle to pass. And as a result, the the uh, investigation conducted by the Public no, de Safety doing. Department um, supported the request, and they made a recommendation to the mayor's office that the no parking, standing, or stopping anytime sign on the eastbound side, excuse me, eastbound side of River Road be, uh, be uh, proposed to council. The ordinance has been proposed for your consideration. It's been properly advertised in the Bucks County Courier Times, and the administration is recommending that you uh, adopt the ordinance. And Mr. Kisselback, can I make a comment? Yeah, this is actually uh, the neighborhood yes. I, grew, I grew up in right here. This is Tarsdale Manor, actually, okay. if people aren't familiar. And so this is Tarsdale Manor, which is between Walnut and Locust. And this is the riverfront 
of Tarsdale Manor, and apparently there's also an inlet, a sewer inlet that people were parking over and causing damage to, and it's the riverside, so people are, people are parking along the river that don't belong parking along there, and they're parking and taking up, people can't turn left or right, and uh, also damaging the sewer grade. So the people whose houses are across the street will still be able to park in front of their houses that are, are on River Road, but it's, it's parking across the street uh, in Tarsdale Manor. So I just want to make sure everybody's aware where it's actually located. Okay. I just gave the residents my copy of the ordinance and there were a few photographs on there so they can review it so they can see exactly where it is. Meanwhile, are there any other questions or comments from any council members? Not seeing any or hearing any, we'll invite any one of you who would like to come up and make a comment. You're certainly invited to come up and say hello. Um, tell us why you're here. And even if it's just uh, acknowledgement that you're here and, and what your views are, whether you're against it or in favor of it, you're welcome to come up at this time. Oh, okay, you just couldn't hear me. Okay, I, I, for some reason, since you couldn't hear me, I thought that was a specific thing. I understand. Okay, all right. You know, the Phillies won last night. Just letting you know. They're not playing tonight. <laughs> okay, no one's coming up. No one's coming up. No one's coming up. I want to close that portion of the uh, proposed ordinance. I ask for a... Uh, uh, a motion we put in, in, in order. Agenda item motion. number six. I'll put a motion in to approve item number six, consideration for um, having a no parking standing, stopping anytime sign on River Road in Tarsdale Manor section on the eastbound Riverside from Walnut Avenue to Locust Avenue. Second. By a motion on the floor. We have a second on the motion. Any additional discussion? Not hearing any of those in favor signify with an aye, 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 and against, any abstentions, unanimous, four to zero. Okay, moving on to agenda item number seven. This is a consideration of public hearing on an ordinance amending chapter 225, vehicles and traffic, article three, parking regulations, section seven, parking, standing, and stopping, appendix eight, shall be amended to add the following restrictions. This is going to be no parking, standing, or stopping sign anytime on Old Lincoln Highway. The direction is westbound, and the location is in front of 2750 Old Lincoln Highway. Mr. Pizer. Yes, thank you. So everything I just said regarding the ordinance for consideration of no parking on River Road would similarly apply to the process for the determination of a no parking recommendation on Old Lincoln Highway on the westbound side of that roadway in front of 2750 Old Lincoln Highway. Uh, for those who are not familiar, 2750 Old Lincoln Highway would be the public storage facility located across from Roosevelt Cemetery. Complaints about vehicles parking on the west side were resulting in obstructed views for people uh, particularly coming out of the uh, facility, having a difficult time entering or exiting onto Old Lincoln Highway from that facility. Upon receipt of the complaint, the Public Safety Department went out, conducted an investigation, and their recommendation to the mayor, and in turn, his recommendation to you, is that the no parking, stopping, standing, anytime sign on the westbound side of Old Lincoln Highway, in front of 2750 Old Lincoln Highway, be adopted. The ordinance has been publicly advertised in the Bucks County Courier Times and is in a, form con uh, in a form acceptable for your consideration this evening. All right. With that said, council members, do you have anything, any comments, any questions? Would anyone like to come forward from the audience to comment on this proposed ordinance? Not seeing anyone come forward. I'll ask for a motion to be put on the floor. Make a motion to approve item seven ordinance, uh, chapter 225, um, vehicles and traffic, no parking, standing, or stopping any time on Old Lincoln Highway westbound in front of 2750 Old Lincoln Highway. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. I'll second it. We have a second on the motion. All those in favor signify with an aye. 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 Oh, you got it. Okay. That's unanimous. Anyone against? 
Any abstentions? Again, 4-0 is the vote. We're skipping agenda um, item number eight, which was tabled, and we're moving on to agenda item number nine. <coughs> this is consideration of a lot line change for Ken Fleck, Fold Pen 2, location is 2975, Galloway Road, Foley Cat, lot modification. The zoning classification is general industrial, as well as light industrial. The tax map partials are 02033, 066, 006, 02033, 066, as well as 02033, 066 004. And the final lot is 0 03 006 003. Okay, now we have this lovely lady up. Could you be kind enough to introduce yourself to us and what are you intending to do while you're here in front of us today? Sure, and I will try and speak loud enough and keep an eye out for you folks if you can't hear me, okay? Good evening. My name is Stephanie Coble. I'm with Fitzpatrick Lenson Buba, and I represent the applicant Full Pen 2. What's before you this evening is really a pretty simple plan. What the applicant is doing is taking four lots consolidating two and two, so it's going to be two lots at the end of the day, and they're changing the line for those two lots to coincide with the zoning boundary so that there's no longer a lot that's half in one district and half in the other. Um, the applicant did submit plans. Your engineer reviewed those plans and gave us a comment letter. We revised the plans in accordance with the comment letter and have uh, met all of the requirements of the comment letter. With me tonight, I have Cody McEwen from Barry Isaden Associates who can answer any technical questions if you have them. This is not a land development plan. This is merely minor subdivision and lot line adjustment. Did you all hear, did you guys, did you hear that? All right, good. I'm, you, I'm not usually accused of being quiet, so. Um, we are looking for a positive recommendation, or I'm sorry, not a recommendation. Um, we are looking for an approval this evening. Um, I'm sorry, I'm used to heading to Planning Commission first and going for the <laughs> recommendation. So we are looking for approval this evening on um, this minor subdivision lot line adjustment. Okay, where is exactly is the, is the change from where to where? Can you explain that? Do you have anything you can put up on the screen for us or just, okay. I have full size plans here, that's all I have. So I can bring them up if you'd like Normally to see Normally we ask for the, uh, the applicant to bring the, a copy of the plans on a, on a thumb drive so we can put it up on the screen. If you put it flat on the table here, I think we'll be able to figure it out real quick. It's, it's, it's a very minor question, but I couldn't track it down. I'm sure the folk in the audience would like to have a look as well. Yeah, well, he can show them in a minute. The lot line is being removed is right here, one of them. And then the new lot line is running across the center of the lot. Kind of in the east-west direction. Follows the, uh, the zoning line between the industrial district, and I believe it's in the So where's the old lot line? And what is the use on lot one? Because I see lot two has an L1 and a G1. On the old lots. So what is the new um, the new use? Because you still have, this still looks like two different uses based upon this. I think Stacy's asking the same question I'm thinking about, but I could be wrong. But on Galway Road, if you're taking four lots, right, and you're making one, two lots, okay, so, and you're combining two lots, so now you have lot, what's one, two, three, four, now you have A and B, right? 
Lot one and two becomes A, right? Now, what is that zone? She said, she said we're making the zoning to change. Are, are, are the two lots one zoning and the other two lots a different zoning? Both lot one is in G1. Right. Well, it says L1 also. Part of it's an L1, so that's... Well, not, lot, not lot one, though. No, it was lot one. I'm sorry. I'm lot okay. Good. Good. Lot one's in what now? I'm, he I'm here and I can't follow what's going on, Mr. Kisselback. There are three conversations going on, plan we can't see. Maybe we could, so that the folk at home in particular will have an opportunity to understand what's happening. Could we get him on mic? Could we get one conversation? Yeah, I only heard his conversation. I didn't hear these. Well, you can't hear them, they can't hear you, but I can hear all of you. Gotcha. <laughs> lot one is fully within the G1 district. And then it looks like lot two is in G1 and L1 with that line that's being removed. But previously, there was a mix of all of them in several different districts. So now the, the proposed lot one, which has the existing building and everything else that Foley is currently using, is, is all within the G1 district. So was original... What lot one originally was on the two lots that you're proposing to combine, were they both G1? So the original lot one that just had the building was in G1. So the other portion that had the building? Was just in G1. But how far out does that go? That's it came to right here. <laughs> So here's the building lot. Here's the lot line that's being and dissolved. What, what was this? This was the other lot? Correct. And what was this zone? This was also G1, it appears, because there's a, there's a very faded line behind here, which is the, the old line that came down. So this, this lot used to come all the way through here, it appears. And then there was a lot. I'm trying to visualize where the fourth old, lot is. Do you have the old plan? I don't have the old plan. From my recollection, looking at so my bearings here, so this was uh, this here, this here, the four lots, one, two, three, for G1 General Industry, and this lot here was L1. So this new license, lot license. is going to still be mixed use. But this lot of yours is so you're proposing fully within. Zoning and lot land lot change. No, they're not proposing a zoning change. Well, there's two different zonings we're combining. Is. is it GI or LI? Good or question. mixed use? Good what, question. Well, I, what are I, we pro it's L, it's I LI wanna, now. I know. I don't want to approve something with a mixed have use. The I think that's line. what we we're getting to. You have <laughs> the bottom line G1 and L1. But it's, is it disseminated enough that we know it's G1 and, and L1? And number two, you have one piece of property with two different zonings on, and the back part, is that landlocked, if that's the case? That's why it is landlocked currently. Yeah. And so, yeah, they're trying to unlandlock it. Yeah, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be landlocked anymore because they would have access to this proposed lot, too, from Galloway Road. So it's currently landlocked? Yes, well, the back lot is currently zoning, landlocked. Would be. In other words, if there was a zoning, they want to put an L-I unless they got some kind of easement from the front lot. It's two different, no, oh, that's all one lot. It would be all one lot. It would be all one lot. Okay. Is that what we're looking at? Yes, thank you, Darren. Yes, yes. Thank you. Excellent job. Thank you very much. Good job, Darren. Comes to the rescue again. The man behind the scenes that gets it all done. Thank you. All right, why don't we do this? Let's do this, if you'd be kind enough. Just so we all know what's doing, because you were explaining it to Liz Stacy and a few other members did come up. Why don't you go over to that illustration there and start from the beginning and tell us what you're doing, okay? Sure. If you'd be kind enough, you, if that would be appreciated. So proposed lot one here on the top is the new lot that will be fully within. Yeah, you have to grab a mic right there. And where is Galloway Road on this thing? Is it the to the left. To the left. To the left. Okay. I'm sorry. Can you say your name again too, so they have it? 
Yes, my name is Cody McEwen. I'm from Barry Isaac and Associates. Galloway Road, to start off, is on the west side here of okay. the lot. Okay. The turnpike is here on the north. Okay. Proposed lot one is on the north side here. Proposed lot two is on the south side, and they're separated by this new line that we're creating through the middle of the property. Proposed lot one is fully within now the G1 district which follows this southerly line of proposed lot one, and of course follows around. Proposed lot two is within two districts, lot, or G1 on this side, and you can see this faded line that runs north-south through the middle of lot two, and L1 on this side. Okay, will, will, will lot, can I have a question, can I ask a question? Will lot two, okay, the lower lot, okay, will that still have two different Zonings? It will, yes. Well, what's the point of doing a subdivision if you're leaving the other two lots two different? She, you had said earlier the purpose was to make them the same. You're, you're, it you're, does help the lot to the north. Yeah, yeah but does that help? The, does that help us with the lot to the south? It, it does doing? not. It does not change the lot to the south. It does change the lot to the north. And what I would also, no, right here. what I would also say to the board is, the same, this plan yeah, this does here. comply it's with the requirements of your saldo and seven. your zoning. So we are not asking so for any no, relief. No, the, uh, it no, is a plan that's in compliance. Here. We're talking about the northern lot being 53.538 acres and the southern lot being 55.014 acres. But now you have lots that are mixed use. Before were the, the two lots that are separate on the, not the side, on the turnpike, on the other side that you're combining into lot two. Joe, are you doing the same thing? In lot two, they were individual zoned lots, correct? They were individual zone lots, but you had a landlocked lot, and I, now I, you're creating I get it's a, a landlocked lot, yeah. but now you're asking us to make one lot to be two zonings. Correct. But you're not going to have a landlocked lot anymore. So it comes down to which is more desirable. I mean, I will say, again, this plan complies with your ordinances. We're not asking for any relief here at all. It is a by, it was, it is a by right plan. I will tell you, we, we have, at this point, no plans or land development for that southern lot. I can't tell you even what it's going to be used for. Certainly, we acknowledge that when we come, if we decide to develop it in some way, shape, or form, we know we have to come back before the township and go through that entire process. But at this point, all we're asking for is the lot line. I know, but the, Ms. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. I want to get to, okay. My question would be, okay, you make the zoning where the buildings are, which does make sense, okay? But then you can say the purpose is to have it the same, which I understand. So, and, the, and it, you may think that you have a right to do it, okay? That's a different story, all right? But what is your purpose of doing this besides making it the same up there? Does that mean that you can sell your property easier? Or does that mean that you have plans for the future two lower lots that you want, you want to bring in a light industrial something in or a heavy industrial plan for the other lot later and say what's your what's the, the, what's the, the point? lots are zoned what the lots are we can't create a heavy industrial lot there is a heavy the, industrial lot in there isn't there in the lower well end? li and g1 oh it's it's not heavy it's li and g1 it's yeah it's li and g1 is okay, what it so, is. so no, we can't we can't create a heavy and i mean i guess we could come in for relief i don't think that would be well received but we can't create a heavy industrial lot. So is, 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 one more thing, I'm sorry. That's okay. Is the, LI, is the LI lot closer to Galway Road or further from Galway? No, the LI lot is closer to the residences. LI? Yes. Okay. Not nope. my residence. Yes, it is. Mr. Paisa, <laughs> do we have lots no that, are, no that have been yeah. combined with that, two uses? There's no so they were two separate lots, and then they were combined to be two uses. Whether they were originally two maybe two uses, have we combined yeah. two lots into being two uses, being one lot with two uses, without going through a some sort of approval process outside of the lot line changes? Off the top of my head, 
I can't think of too many times, if any, over the last 30 years that we've done that. What would be if, the reason for all. us to do that? Generally, we try to, historically, we've tried to avoid creating and in many cases have attempted to eliminate split zoned lots whenever whenever practical, whenever feasible. And would that be the reason why they were still two separate lots previously and not necessarily combined? I'd say in this instance probably so, but I can't speak to I can't speak to what's been happening on the different parts of the of the lots. I know that this property has has been in in front of the township several times in the last five to ten years for uh, various land development or zoning approvals associated with the activity that exists there currently. Um, part of it was, I think, for uh, there may be some sort of rental activity that goes on there now, and approval was given for that. And I think there may have been an expansion of the existing building, if memory serves. So uh, the, the property has been in front of the township a couple of different times under the configuration that currently exists. What is the current structure of the zoning, the four different lots at this time? The current there's four lots. Can you point that out? The current, the current structure of the zoning is that what will be lot one has some light industrial and general industrial. Lot two is split in half. The, no, the one I, I didn't ask that. I'm sorry. I, I didn't, I, maybe I didn't phrase it properly. Presently, what is the four zoning lots that are up there the right now? The four zoning lots are, pro over in here is what would be lot one, former lot one, I don't want to confuse anyone, former lot two, and then down here you have lots three and four. Okay, so it was, uh, I thought it was over to the right yeah. here, like, so it's a small, so the first former number one is much smaller than the rest. That, can you help me understand the landlock situation? Yeah. I'm sorry. I need more information about that. Bottom right side. Bottom yeah. It's, it's wholly landlocked. So that the, the light industrial section, the bottom right lot, that is louder. The bottom right lot, that is lo noted lot two. Yeah. Bottom right. This is light industrial zoning. Is yeah. this 55? No, that's not 55 acres. No. That's less. It's about half. Yeah, it's about half. Correct. Okay. Um, this section, and then what you are describing as lot one, which is the both parcels yep. on the top. Correct. That, that section is landlocked. No. The section that's landlocked is, I'm going to use the cursor, is down okay. here. And what we're saying is by combining these two lots, Yes, there will be a split lot. Now, what I, was, what I would caution you is it's not two separate uses on a lot. It's two zoning districts on a lot. Right now, there's no use on that lower lot. It, it's vacant. Okay. So, Mr. Pizow, do we have them with two separate zonings on one lot no. that people have come in for a lot line change? Maybe use was the wrong word. I'm, I apologize. I'm not an attorney, so I'm asking if that is a correct where they've had a lot line change and two separate zoning districts are on the same lot without other consideration. I'm fine with lot ones being one lot. I have no issue with lot one. It's all one the zoning. Back, the back of lot one now is light, right? No, they're all general, right, G1? They will, they will be, she said. They, yes, oh, okay. Um, looks like they're right all Right now, it's all G1. lot one general. No. It lot one like and two, what are they currently? Yeah, G1. Yeah, G1. Lot one is G1. Lot one and two, in and the back is still G1. Not, not lot one. Not lot one. Not what it's going to be. What is Where it now? The light industrial in the back of lot one. Now? It was kind of down it's here. Just to here. Yeah. Is there light industrial on lot one now? There on what is going to be lot one? No, yeah. rigid. Oh, what no, is going right to be? Me. What's going to be lot one? Is there light industrial now? Well, no, there is no light industrial on lot one. It is now all. Um, G1, and that's all because of the way this, you know, part of this is combining lots and moving this lot line. 
And the reason it's all now going to be one is by virtue of moving the lot line. Um, one other thing, and not, and not to get too picky on this, but there's nothing in your zoning ordinance that prohibits a lot from being within two zoning districts that I'm aware of. It was not cited in any review letters to us that it's prohibited by any township ordinance. So I, I would also note that. Yeah. I also have one thing to note. The landlock parcel that was back here is the only portion that's in the light industrial zone. And then by, by deleting this lot line, we're giving that lot access to Galloway Road. I know, but the problem is, okay, the problem is, now you may have a right to do it, I'm not a lawyer, maybe Paizo can, Mr. Paizo can tell us later, but, but the problem for me is that you're subdividing that lot, right? So you're fine, and I'm, I agree with Ms. Champion, that it doesn't bother me that lot one's fine, that you have lot one. But now you're creating lot two, which has light industrial in the back and general in the front. And then if you come in later and say, well, we want to put something gen light industrial and we need to change the zoning to the front lot, but we have a right because we're in a hardship situation because there's two different lots. It's, now it's one lot. So you're making one lot with two different zonings and, ha and you're going to come into us again. What zoning are you going to use when you come in to put improvements on that lot? How can you have one lot with two different zonings? Okay. Well, How Conceivably, there could be uses that are appropriate and fall within both zoning districts. So you're going to have, so I mean, you're going to, it's so, hard to tell so you're going to have a, it's hard to tell you lot, in a vacuum. So the front of a new lot is going to be general and the back of a new lot is going to be light industrial, is that what you're saying? And, and there could conceivably be a use for that lot that is permitted in both the general and light industrial. I, I just want to go back to something that you just said, that you need to keep that lot line get it out of there because the light industrial won't have a way to get out to Galloway Road. I don't understand why that would stop General in the front of it from light going out to Galloway Road if that was the case. I don't well, get it. There, there's, all we're saying is there's no road access on this parcel. Yeah, but that's your problem. That's not our problem. But. Typically, you want to create lots that have road frontage. I, okay, but when you create a lot that has a road frontage, right? We are. Then you have a buildable lot, a big giant lot that you didn't have before, right? On the right, on the lower end, and then you can come in later because you've been in for other stuff and say, okay, we want to build a manu light manufacturing on this lot, and we have a buy right to do that because the zoning is light industrial, okay. and the building itself, the light industrial is going to be in the back uh, and the, the front that was general, we're just gonna have a driveway to get out to Galway Road. It's not, we're not really building any light industrial on it. So are you suggesting that you're not in favor of the plan because it could allow us to develop a parcel that we're already owning? That, that you're already zoning, you're already zoning, you're already owning. Who has a parcel that has two different, they can just select this, select the zoning for the future. So well, you have in your um, note here, your letter, lands development is not proposed at this time, no, but now you're talking so about we installing can, a road and future development. We, we so have no... Can we be that, clear it, on that? I can be very clear on that. There's yeah, well, zero land zone development zone proposed at this time. I'm trying to answer the questions of the board about okay. what potentially may happen, but at this point, it's really hard to answer those questions because we don't have any plans before you. We don't even know what our intent is with this parcel. So we no. don't know the purpose, but we're, we're trying to and make why, all of so these So why are we doing this today? This is yeah. step one. There's no purpose. What are you doing for? I, well, <laughs> I, let, me back, we, let me go back to what he said. There's no reason why that front lot is general and the back is light that you can't go through that parcel, go out to, through the general to get out to the highway. But, Mayor, my, my biggest I mean, issue it, is that's wrong. What, did your, what you're saying is not right. I mean, you can go through there right now. You can go yeah. run a road right out there now. Well, you can. Is so that's, what you're saying is, is not true. Yes, but before this becomes one lot, let's, let's do a situation here. If they were to put a driveway through here, build something back here, let's say, 
and this is two separate lots, what's to stop them from selling the driveway portion and now this building that might happen in the future has no access to it because they sold off this front lot to somebody else? Well, they're certainly not going to sell it without reserving an access easement or subdividing out the driveway. That let's, let's, I mean, please. If I ask for, if I ask for a lot, okay, to make it sense. if there's nothing in our zoning that's against this, then maybe there should be, you know, but I don't know. Maybe you'll have to go to court about that. But, but the thing is, like, if I had my house and I wanted to subdivide a lot and part, part of it was commercial and part of it was residential and I wanted to subdivide my residential part off and then have a, another lot that's either commercial in the back and residential in the front, they wouldn't let me do that. I can't do that. Because I'm creating a lot that has two different zonings on we, it. We've, we've had those issues where we've, in the past, um, that were original, and now we're trying to avoid that. And I, I honestly, I, I don't see a reason why, unless, I don't see a reason why we're here tonight to do this, to be quite honest, it, except to clean up your lot issues in terms of your landlocked lot, which I get from a, from a business perspective. But I... I would just note, though, this plan and what we're requesting com complies with everything the township requires. There's nothing in your saldo or zoning ordinance that has been pointed to thus far that says this is not permitted. Well, yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't pointed out in a letter to you from an engineering firm or our people. That doesn't mean that it can't be and, stopped. You know what I mean? So. So, I mean, you know, you can do what you want, but the point is, if you are creating a lot that has two different zonings on it, why don't you make that other lot a different zone, like a general, the whole thing, general commercial? General commercial. Like, whatever, whatever the front, what's the G1. front? Thanks. Thanks. Hello. You would want the latest zoning. Yeah, put, like, make the whole thing the same zoning. Why don't you propose that? Do the lot change and then make the second lot light, light, light industrial. I mean, I would have to speak to my client about that. If that's something the board would like to see done, we, we can discuss that. That certainly hasn't been advertised and is not before you this evening. Well, that's why we can delay it if we have to. But, but the point is, if, you, if, if we, we approve this, right? Mm -hmm. Here's my question as a lawyer. If we approve this the way it is, right? And we say, okay, you're right. You have a right to do it. Okay, we have to do it. It's good, right? Then you come into us later, six months later, nine months later, a year later, and say, well, you're the one that made this lot with two different zonings. So you, you, you're we, we're kind of creating your own hardship right. where you're saying, we created this lot actually, and now we're stopping you from using it for what you want to use it for. We created a actually, lot with two different zonings yeah. in I, the one. I, I, to, to Mr. Knowles's point, <coughs> and it was a question earlier, again, split, lo, split zoned lots do exist in the township. They, however, Historically, for the 30 years I've been here, we haven't created them, we've worked to eliminate them. And so, to Mr. Knowles's point, if, if the intention here is to eliminate a line that currently delineates the GI from the LI, and council is of a mind to do it, and the applicant is insistent that it wants it, the next logical step would be to make one side or the other a different zoning to match, to match, so that all of proposed lot two would be of a single zone, so that in the future when they do come to develop lot two, you're not dealing with two sets of set setbacks, two sets of, of development standards, half of which would apply to one half of the lot and the others that would apply to the other. And in as much as the lot two backs up to no fewer than one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, at least a dozen residential properties, I'd say that you're in, you, what you would likely do is ask the, the applicant to not only eliminate the lot line, but if council is of a mind to allow that, to make all of lot to LI. Well, what if they came back and said we want the back lot to be GI? Would the council approve that? Council could, but it's in council's discretion which of the two zoning districts would be more appropriate based on what is surrounding the property. And what is G1 again, if you can GI it? is heavy industrial. It's the heaviest oh, industrial zoning that you have in the township. Can, 
Can I make a suggestion to the board? Can I request that we table this so that I can talk to my client about your concerns regarding the split zoning and see if they are amenable to working through that with the township because I'm, I'm hearing you loud and clear on the split zoning and then we'll, we'll have a discussion with your solicitor as to whether that's something we want to look at and work through. Obviously, it's going to take some advertising. You can't do it tonight. Um, would that be something this board would feel something comfortable with? Well, as far as what I can hear, it's the, the bottom part, we would yeah. prefer it to be light industrial. I, I understand, okay. but I need, I don't have the authority to tell you we will agree to that or not agree to that no, I'm this evening. That we're amen amenable towards tabling this. Tape, table. The, the so so we're really only talking about the, the southern lot. lot. So we want one lot that's one zoning when you come in for the lot line change. Well, two lots. Two lots, thank you. Sorry, <laughs> thank the one you. lot that's in question yes. is the one, one zoning is classification. and. Mr. Paizo, um, the lots that you were speaking about before in terms of having dual zonings, they were more or less grandfathered in, in a sense, because of historically historical uses, considering that the township, how it has grown. To, that, to your point of trying to take away those dual zonings as, it, as we can. Uh, I think we're saying the same thing. Yes. The township, in, in, in 2024, the township does not, as a matter of policy, create split zoned lots. It's bad practice, it's bad planning, it's bad zoning. So Thank we you. don't do that. Thank you. But we're not creating it, it's already there. No, we're not. They're creating it. We're created it. by taking a line out. I think I heard they want to table. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, I'm, that, that okay, would be my we're gonna, we're gonna, suggestion. We're going to go there right now. We're going to go there right now, okay? You know what we, you heard what we I said. I understand There's where no you are. speeding it to, into uh, oblivion. Yep. So we're fine, and you're very um, professional the way you conduct yourself. I appreciate that, the way both of you, and all three of you, the way you present yourself, and, and we do appreciate that. And we do enjoy the company of having, um, the company has been with us for many, many years. So you want to be accommodating, but by the same token, you have to understand where we are today in Ben Salem and where we were 25 years ago. So light industrial would be, uh, would be uh, quite nice. Okay. I will, I will talk to my client about that following this evening, and then we will be in touch with the township solicitor um, to work through Fine. the process. That's great. Single, if homes also, single homes will also be a possibility you want to consider for your, uh, for your clientele. What are you looking at me that way for? I'd rather, I'd rather jobs. You'd rather have rather big have factories, jobs. as I'd you're saying, jobs. at 500,000 square foot factory be owner than, than single homes? Is that what you're saying? Don't say that. Well, then, if you're saying it, we disagree 100% on that one. Okay. All right. Here we are. All right. I'm going to ask for a motion to be put on the floor. I'll put, I'll put a motion on the floor that we uh, table uh, to a, uh, should we do a date certain. How, how, mu how much time are you asking for, Stephanie? You have to advertise and everything, so you're talking at least a month. Yes. For now, I would say at least a month, but if we're going to ask for any change in the government, that's obviously going to advertising and, and presenting why don't we why don't we say um, a month or why don't we say in what's this may why don't we say into july should we say july 31st july second meeting we have in july. Second meeting. july 22nd would be our second july meeting in july july that's 22nd okay is that that's fine by me okay then we have the motion for that yeah is i'll it? make a motion that we uh, table the applicant uh ken fleck FOL Pen 2, 2975 Galway Road, to a date certain of July 22nd. Now, I, I, as I'm looking at this, um, we are approaching the, you know, in fact, July will go past the current uh, period for approval by the, or consideration by the council under the MPC. So um, you're I giving. submit an extension letter to you tomorrow. Thank you. That would be perfect. Okay, and I'll, I'll, I'll amend my. Uh, motion that will move it to July 22nd contingent upon uh, you, you're agreeing to give us the extended time. Yeah, of course. All right, we have a motion on the floor. I'll second it. Second on the motion. All those in favor, signify with an aye. 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 And against the abstentions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good luck. Okay, here we go. We're on agenda item number. Mr. Mr. Kisselbeck. Yes, sir. 
I'm with you. Well, I, okay, you know, that's a good idea. Since we have the public here, some of you may not be able to be, come back in July. So if you would like to come up now and make your comments, they'll be on record uh, just to make sure. And you're certainly welcome to come back in July, July 22nd, but you could be down in Wildwood fishing, swimming. So unless those houses are on one acre lots, I'm not for houses. I want large lots. Well, you're not getting one acre lots in Ben Salem. Uh, uh, <laughs> High yeah, you can work on all you want. It's not going to happen. Well, you don't want a 500,000 square foot factory for that. So um, in as much as the public has come out, hmm? the council president's going to give them an opportunity to comment. You may want to stay and hear what their comments are. That's entirely up to you. And we need your name and your address. Marie Zimmerman. Marie, I'm sorry. Marie Zimmerman, 126 Liberty Drive. Are you kidding? No. You're doing perfect right now. It's perfect. <laughs> 126 Liberty Drive. Okay. In Bentown. Um, we, our properties in, in Billows of Chancellor's Glen back up to some of the property from Foley. And our concern is if they change everything, we already have enough noise in there. The, the turnpike is there and if they start putting businesses in there that are going to make a lot of noise or do anything to disrupt, um, our homes are going to be devalued. And it, it, there's only about seven or eight houses that are on that property line, but there's a whole development there. And we want to be able to keep our homes and have as little noise, a little activity, and not have them come in and bring in some kind of a big business that they would take up and build close to our homes. I know there's um, a flood zone there and some wetlands, but I don't know exactly. I'm not a lawyer. I don't know where those, what they can build there. And it's right behind my house. And they're saying a 50 foot easement, which that's between you and I. You know, it's not very far when you're sitting in your home trying to sit on your patio and look yeah. out so, or whatever. So. And that's what we're all concerned about is that it affects our homes. And okay. What they we're do. not at that point yet, but, but we appreciate your right. concern and we'll certainly, okay. and that's what we're doing right now with the council members, making sure that they don't have that opportunity to put, I would say, general industrial as opposed to possibly light industrial, which is better. And to me, single homes would even be best, but that's my opinion. Well, as far as I'm concerned, I'm pleased with the fact that you said, go back and look at it again and see what you can do. But we'll be back, and we'll have more people. Good. Thank you. We appreciate it. It helps us make our decision for Thank sure. Thank you. I don't know if we want this rowdy guy coming up. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not going to shout at you, because you throw Somebody back here as an officer will throw me out of this place real <laughs> fast. Good evening, folks. Uh, my name's Steve Purrs. I'm at 18 Freedom uh, Lane in uh, Chancellor's Glen, Ben Salem. I've uh, been living here for just about four years. Uh, as I mentioned to these people, my biggest concern, this has nothing to do with you folks, but I wish at least these people would have at least came to Chancellor's Glen and said we'd like to talk to you about what some of the plans we're doing back there. Because it's, it's going to impact our, our real estate values. I'm on the other end, so I don't even have a problem with it. But these folks over here, your real estate values are going to get screwed up, number one. Number two, I'm not going to, you know, labor everything. Uh, there, there won't be happy candidates. Nobody over there knows about it. I found out two days ago. So, and like I said, this has nothing to do with council. It's just that they could have at least had the courtesy to say we'd like to maybe meet with you people and tell you what our plans are. They didn't, they didn't do that. So I'm on the board of directors, Chancellor's Glen. And I'm going to make a very strong effort with these folks over here to jam this place with 206 people the next meeting when this comes up. Because once the Clint Chancellor's Glen Senior Army gets armed, they're extremely dangerous. So that's all I have to say. I just wanted to make that comment. Thank you, Steve.
Hi, my name is Regina Redmond, and I'm at 124 Liberty, and thank you for letting us come up and, and speak about why we're here tonight, even though everything was tabled. Um, I live across from um, the buildings that will back up to the uh, Foley property. They back up to them right now, and um, I'm on the corner along with the turnpike. Um, without a sound barrier. So you can only imagine what my porch is like. Um, I bought my home in 2018, and the appraisal came in $10,000 lower than anyone else's houses in that development because I line up with the turnpike without a sound barrier. Um, since um, the pandemic, as we all know, everyone uses the internet and everything is done by trucking now. So the noise level has gotten immense since then. It's mainly trucks that are running, and it's 24-7. So with the development of uh, Foley Cat and large equipment, you know, if we can stop any of that now, um, you know, that's why we're here tonight. Um, you know, uh, sound does affect mental health. We are all 55 and over, and we're in our last years of our lives, and we bought this place with hopes that, you know, we could relax and, and have leisure there. So um, I just felt, you know, I, that I should be heard. Um, you know, I'd like to be able to fight for a sound barrier. Currently, right now, the turnpike is being expanded. It's just not being expanded up to where we are. That was in 2006 we were promised a sound barrier, and here we well, are today. You're, you're just to update you a little bit, because my house backs up to the same turnpike, uh, <laughs> and my sister lived on Liberty just till six months ago. I sold her house, and she lives in Cape May now. But, but uh, the sound barrier, once they put a third she lane in, you, you're, you're, you will get a sound barrier along anywhere where they put the third lane. So it's not a matter of whether it stretches to your area or not. So it's it, where they put a third lane in. First, they had to widen the bridges, and then they widened the bridges. And you know, I bought my house in, in the 1990s and was told well, it's getting a sound barrier. <laughs> okay, but uh, I, I've recently reached out to some people in our state government and such, and I've been told they're fighting to get it done in 2027. Now that's what they're saying. Well, so I appreciate I, that. I did receive yeah. a letter from the Turnpike uh, stating that I have to allow people to be on my property. I don't believe it has to do with the extension outside my property as of yet, but I think it has to do with what's going on with um, by Neshamne Mall and connecting the overpass of 95 yeah, they just did um, a lot and of Ben work Salem at, Boulevard. Yeah, they just did a lot of work at Ben Salem Boulevard and the Turnpike almost down to Argyle. So you have Barnsley East, Newportville, Harvest Run West, Salem Point, your development, the woods, Chancellor Glen, the woods. They're all affected, okay? So once the sound wall's in and everybody's in the same boat, because of the bridges, they had, to, they had to expand all the bridges first, and they've done that now, and then they had some emergency bridge stuff that got into the money, apparently. And it was supposed to be beyond 2027, but we've been talking to uh, the mayor's office and, and, and people on council. I've been talking to our state rep and our, our state senator, and we've been told that they're moving up to date now and they're trying to get it done in 2027 they're working on it now. But I've heard that before, but you know, I'm just like... Yeah, I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll say that in my prayers at night. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate the information. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. You can, you can just push that on the table if you want, Power if it's table. easier. I see. Okay. Anyone like to come forward? Don't forget you have the opportunity on July the 22nd also. To, even if you spoke tonight, you can also come and speak at that time too. And Steve, we'll expect you to fill the, fill the stadium for us, right? It's like a Phillies game, 44,000, right? <laughs> All right, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we're going to move on to agenda item. Uh, let me see, we tabled that. We, did, we, had a, we had a motion on that. Did we have a second? I second it. And we voted? I don't think, I don't remember. No, I, don't, the, I don't think we did either. Yeah, okay. So that's where we want to go now. Ask for the vote on that to be tabled. Aye. 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 Unanimous, four to zero. Well, <laughs> they didn't want anything on the shores of North Carolina either. Huh? 
Okay. All right, agenda item number 10. This is consideration of a reduction of permit fee. Ben Salem School District located 3000 Dun Allen Drive. This is a recording district office cooling system, and they were requesting a, a reduction from $473 to $236.50, which is a normal procedure with our relationship with the school board. And so if you have any questions on this, ladies and gentlemen, please read it. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve Wait, item. I have a question. The All one right. page says 482. The other page says 473. So, okay, so that's, so shouldn't we still have the original fee even at, or to show the 40, which one is not? The, the township's fee is the, what you should follow. $473 would be the items that would be eligible for the reduction. The 50% reduction would bring the eligible items down to $236.50. Plus the difference of the $9, so it would be $243 or $245. Well, the, the, those yeah, are items you can't yeah. Okay. So I'm just saying the total due would be $245, okay. $236.50 is the Plus the $9. No, we're not doing the, the, amount, the amount that you, if you are inclined to give a 50% waiver the amount of the waiver would be 236.50 right thank you mr paizo just the accountant in me is trying to do the numbers and i'm not seeing it <laughs> okay well it looks like we need a new accountant there <laughs> okay i'm an accountant yeah, i'll make a motion that we accept the uh did someone make a motion yet or are we okay Okay, I'll make a motion that we reduce the uh, fees for the uh, Ben Salem School District from 473 to 236.50 as presented. Second. Motion on the floor. Second. All those in favor signify. Aye. Aye. And against any abstentions, unanimous. Okay, number 11, consideration of approval of a settlement stipulation and agreement among and between Ben Salem Township. Van Salem Township Zoning Hearing Board and the Premier Media LLC. Mr. Paisa, I'm going to let you dance with this one. Thank you. Uh, Council has uh, is obviously aware of this matter. You've been briefed on it previously in executive session, and most recently um, you approved a rezoning of a piece of land that is involved in the settlement of this matter. Um, the quick history for the, for the public, um, the applicant Premier Media had put in an application to put a billboard at the intersection of Street Road and Humeville Road. Um, the, the township, believing that the uh, billboard was not permitted there, um, the Zoning Hearing Board denied the requests for variances that otherwise would have allowed it. Uh, Premier Media appealed that decision to Common Pleas Court, as is their right. Uh, subsequently, uh, the township, the zoning, uh, the township um, worked with Premier Media to see if there was some option other than continuing the litigation, which there's always a possibility the township could lose and end up with the billboard at that location, which is something the township didn't want to see happen. Uh, ultimately, the township was able to find an appropriate piece of land on which Premier Media might put um, the electronic sign, um, and uh, the township, the Zoning Hearing Board, and uh, the Premier appeared in front of uh, the Common Pleas Court judge to discuss the possibilities of a settlement that would allow for the sign to be located at a different location in the township. Uh, ultimately, uh, the settlement was reached. Um, the location now would be along Street Road, um, right next to the slip ramp entrance to the uh, turnpike. Um, the settlement um, would have the prop would have the sign going on township-owned land, and as a result, the township will see revenue from the placement of the sign, which over the course of the life life of the lease would result in um, revenue to the township in excess of $1.1 million over the life of the lease term. Uh, the negotiation would also give the township access to the billboard such that the township would have the ability to put 
um, messaging that's township based on the sign, um, one panel per minute, um, every minute, every day, 365 days a year. Uh, finally, the, uh, the arrangement is such that the township will have a say over the content of the billboard, um, and therein uh, anything that would be um, espousing alcohol, tobacco, is, um, would not be permitted, um, various kinds of advertising, political advertising, the township has uh, absolute say over what can go on the sign. So, under those circumstances, the Township, Premier, and the Zoning Hearing Board have all reached um, a settlement uh, that's re memorialized in the stipulation that's before you this evening. Uh, the stipulation is such that it's been approved by the Zoning Hearing Board, it's been approved by the applicant, and now all it requires is the approval of all of you. And again, I will remind you that you did rezone the land so that the land can be used in this fashion at a council meeting uh, roughly two, three months ago. Thank you. Good explanation of the very uh, twisted situation, but thank you very much, Mr. Pizer. It's a good outcome for the township. It keeps a, a, a billboard from a location where the township absolutely did not want to see it. Um, puts it on land that's otherwise not being used by the township, will be a source of revenue, as I said, over a million dollars, over $1.1 million during the life of the, uh, the uh, billboard. And again, uh, the township will have access to put its own messaging on there and can otherwise control the content of the sign. Yeah, the location is perfect. It could it's be perfect. any better. And it, also shield, it also shields Street Road and the uh, insert yeah, from our... Rescue, the rescue building that we need for fires, right. it's a has a tremendous pur purpose for training, and we absolutely need it. But it's it's not exactly the greatest looking building from Street Road. So this sign will also help with vegetation, and the sign itself will help uh, you know uh, have these. Mr. Paisa, they're <laughs> responsible for the maintenance of the uh, area around it, not the township. That's the land correct. that's going to uh, them. We have no. This is no cost to us whatsoever in terms of maintenance. And if we ever have to do maintenance, we'll bill them. They're responsible for the installation. They're responsible for the uh, cost, uh, the utilities, the electric. And they're responsible for the maintenance and upkeep. And Mr. Knowles makes an excellent point that I neglected to mention, which is, um, along with the placement of the sign, they are also planting additional buffering and screening that will, again, block the view of the uh, emergency services training facility from Street Road, so it'll improve that vista there as part of this uh, part of this arrangement. Okay, thank you once again. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I'll ask for a motion to be put on the floor to approve this settlement stipulation and agreement. Yeah, I'll put a I'll put a motion uh, on the floor that we approve uh, the consideration of this settlement stipulation agreement between Ben Salem Township, the Ben Salem Township Zoning Board, and Premier Media LLC. Uh, as presented uh, and explained by Mr. Paizo. All right, so we have a motion on the floor. I'll second it. We do have a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And against? Any abstentions? Unanimous, four to zero. Okay, moving right along. Public comment is the next agenda item. I see no one in the audience for the public comment, so I'll close that. Other business from supporting personnel? Phil, I'll let you have the first bite of the apple. Would you like to say anything? Uh, yes, Mr. President, I have one thing to, uh, to bring up. Uh, last Thursday, I had the opportunity as a trustee of the uh, Bucks County Community College to preside over the 2024 graduation class. And uh, I just wanted to make a note that I was happily uh, surprised by seeing Ms. Benitez's daughter, Carmen, graduate, and uh, she looked great in her cap and gown. I just want to say congratulations to Ms. Benitez and her family. Thank you. Well, nicely said, and you being in that position is, is an honor, and having you with us, you know, having that bestowed on you also. Congratulations to your daughter. Also, Thank she becomes so eligible to be in the Alumni Association, like you know, an <laughs> alumni at Boston County Community College. Okay. It was fantastic to see Phil up there. It's like a fangirl going, I know him. <laughs> <laughs> so, and thank you for taking the time to talk with her and 
appreciate did your dedicated service to Bucks County Community Air, College Air, for Air many years. Impersonation too? No. no? Oh, but you Phil, you've really. been with them for 15 years or more, you said? Oh, yeah. More than 15 years. So thank okay. you for your service. One more year, you'll be able to graduate from there. <laughs> Debbie, would you like to add anything this evening? Okay. Mr. Pies, I want to go to you. In deference to my uh, vocal cords, nothing further. Okay. Mr. Mayor, Joseph. Hi. You hung in here, man. I'm proud of you. Uh, well, certainly you all know the Memorial Day Parade, Monday. Okay. Hopefully we'll all be there and uh, marching. This year I won't be marching. I'll be riding. Uh, that's not funny. Corvette? I didn't laugh. <laughs> that's me. I think it was. No, it was. I didn't laugh. <laughs> I didn't. Anyway, last year. <laughs> anyway, we expect to have a great parade. And uh, that's the, and the uh, concert start uh, Wednesday the 29th is our first concert here, so uh, hopefully you'll all be there. You should be there for the opening. We'll be up on stage, so hopefully you'll see everybody then. And uh, I can't think of anything else. I think that things are going well in the township. Right, Phil? Okay, we'll go to our council members. We'll go to uh, Michelle, would you like to go first? Yes, congratulations to my daughter, Carmen, on your college graduation. Um, my daughter, Gianna, along with the Ben Salem High School seniors are gonna celebrate senior prom this Friday. Um, and they have graduation coming up on June 7th. So congratulations, class of 2024. Very proud of my daughter, Gianna, as well. Um, sorry that I could not be at the police memorial today. It is a beautiful service that's held at Ben Salem every year. Um, I really wish I could be there. My daughter Gianna was there um, singing with the Ben Salem High School Feminist Choir. So thank you ladies for joining us today um, and representing Ben Salem well. Have a happy and safe Memorial Day weekend and enjoy the parade. Thanks. Okay, uh, Mr. Knowles. Yeah, uh, yeah, thanks for mentioning that. Uh, uh, congratulations to your daughter too. Uh, thanks for mentioning the police memorial. Uh, I was again there this morning uh, uh, with the Ms. Champion and. and is Kisselbeck and, and of course the mayor, but uh, and, and Officer Yezzy and Officer Armstrong's property uh, uh, family uh, were still were still here representing them, uh, and you know uh, both these <coughs> officers that we lost happened a long time ago. Uh, uh, Mr. Yezzy, not as long. Ar Mr. Armstrong, Mr. Armstrong was a young officer. If you see his picture, he was a young man, and uh, I remember he, I remember when it happened actually. Uh, uh, adjacent to the Wawa and Bristol Pike, uh, almost the Andalusia there, Woodhaven Road. So uh, it's been a long time, and uh, it was a tremendous service. Our, our clergy from different churches uh, were all there, and, a, and, our, and our local rabbi, uh, and they did a tremendous job. It was a beautiful service, and we had beautiful weather too, which was really nice. Uh, and again, we're looking forward to this Memorial Day parade. The mayor has ordered perfect weather, right? Perfect weather. For Monday, Memorial Day. Monday? Uh, yeah, oh, next Monday. Yeah, per perfect weather. I love it. And uh, I, God willing, I will be walking. Okay, so uh, and uh, I ordered uh, my son can't come home with the Mustang this year. So, but I did talk to Frank Schilling and I ordered a car <laughs> for the council to put their flags and their candy. So we'll be okay. All right. All right so we'll be ready. Ten o'clock. Uh, Ten o'clock, and it begins about. Uh, near Holy Ghost, above where the Honda station is, right there in that area, and we'll end at the bottom of uh, Mill Road uh, at the uh, Polo Cemetery on Mill Road. That's it, Mr. Kisselbeck, thank you. Finished? I'm finished, believe okay. it or not, yeah. Stacy. So, wishing everybody a happy Memorial Day. Um, the service this morning is always very touching, warm, um, and um, it makes you think about every day what our officers throughout the country um, put on the line for us and the ones who don't come home. So please keep them all in your prayers, the ones who are still here and the ones who have left us um, so tragically. Um, and uh, looking forward to seeing everybody on Monday and then again on Wednesday at the amphitheater. I think it's Super Tramp cover band this year. I'm not sure. I think that's who it is. Is that the opening? I think it's like a super trampism or something. Or Trump, I don't know what it is. Something. I think, I think it's super tramp. I believe. I went to super tramp. 
What's that? Real super trip. You don't think it's the Super Tramp one? I don't remember who it is. I'm looking forward to it. It's my birthday, so I'm really looking forward to it. So I'll when see everybody on Wednesday, on Monday and Wednesday. Congra Wednesday. Wednesday's your birthday. Congratulations. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm just going to make it quick, if I may, because Joe uh, Knowles covered it very well in terms of what's happening. But again, uh, we were there this morning at the police memorial in Ben Salem. Unfortunately, uh, has two officers that were killed in the line of duty, Officer Armstrong and Officer Yezzy. Uh, quite some time ago, but it's something, it seems like it was yesterday because uh, as, Joe, as Joe had said, they were very young men. Um, the Memorial Day Parade is at uh, 10 a.m. it starts. We have uh, 1,700 flags. I have the flags and candy. So we have that for the council members to, uh, to give out to the kids. So we added an extra 200 flags so we could hopefully make it through Andalusia at the very end of it. So we should every year, we add more flags and every year we need more flags. <clears throat> so with that said, um, I just say God bless America and God bless Ben Salem. Uh, the meeting is adjourned.